I am Akram Zatari, an artist from Lebanon. I'm an artist who uh, is interested in history in general. History means everything that happened in the past, but the media that I use are basically film, photography, and sometimes I do installations with photographs and other types of objects that I collect or produce. I studied architecture, I really, uh, practiced as an architect, and then in a few years later I decided to do my master's in media studies, which opened for me the path to make films, videos, and photographs. So I had a slight career shift that's in the, in the 90s. I had also experience in television, I worked as a producer uh, in television, and then I quit television to found with colleagues the Arab Image Foundation, that an organization that we created in Lebanon to conserve photographs and to study the history of photography in the Arab world and its diaspora. I started realizing that I, I operate more like an archaeologist. I go and do fieldwork research and seize objects, photographs from different places, try to write uh, their biographies, trying to write uh, the narratives that they communicate, try to work on family history, but also political history and several types of histories. And it's, it's then when I realized that I have a natural inclination to history through different media, mainly through photographs. In May 2022, I, I had a, a talk um, upon the invitation of Actor the Archive and Kokene Boon, my friend, uh, the Turkish artist, proposed to me to have a look at Gate 27 because knew that I was looking for a residency that would allow me a period of research in Istanbul institutions, in Istanbul archives, libraries, uh, Ottoman archives, etc. Offering so, Gate 27 and of course I knew before Beral Madra. Beral is a friend and a curator who came to Lebanon a long time ago from 1997. She made an exhibition of Lebanese artists in uh, in Istanbul. So this is how the, the idea developed, and we had a couple of online meetings, and this is how uh, we crossed back. The project I'm currently working with is a long-term project that started in 2014. When I did, uh, uh, when I was invited to Boazici University to spend months in Istanbul. And when I was offered also uh, research support. And this is how I discovered the necropolis of Sidon at the Archaeology Museum. Of course, I had I know about it because people in Sidon know that there, is, there are a set of 19 sarcophagi that are displayed in the Archaeology Museum in Istanbul. But I wanted to know more. And through this first meeting with Atamadem, we became friends later. I got to know Osman Hamdi Bey and got to know the manuscript that he wrote in Sidon about that necropolis. And then I started the journey of comparing two sarcophagi, the sarcophagus of Tabnit that was uh, unearthed by Hamdi Bey in 1887 and the sarcophagus of his son, Eshmun Azar II, both are Phoenician kings from Sidon, which is by the way my city. The second sarcophagus is at the Louvre. So the whole idea is how to create a relationship between a sarcophagus of a son and a sarcophagus of his father, now found in two different cities, Istanbul and Paris. How to bring to the attention of the public that by showing Eshmun Azar II alone, you are missing part of the picture and by showing uh, Tabnit, the sarcophagus of Tabnit in Istanbul alone, you are missing part of the story. So, so uh, the project is still ongoing because I'm looking for the final form. In the beginning, I had proposed something to both museums to allow me to 3D scan this object and that object and recreate it and place it in the same room. The son would be with the father and then the father would be with the son in both cities, in both uh, but. This did not materialize and it's taking really, it's taking a lot of time, but now finally I am reaching a possible solution, hopefully this year. As a city, many of my works uh, relate to directly to Sidon, 
So it's not a coincidence that I'm working on to sacrifice the of two Sidonian kings. I am interested in lineage, let's call it, like uh, continuity between past and present. And its most dire manifestation is father to son, or father to daughter, or mother to daughter, to have a place for her too. Because the role of the mother was really uh, important in finalizing the inscriptions on, because her husband died, so she is there through the voice of the son. And I'm trying to find a, a place of her in, in the project. All what we know is that uh, this Phoenician handle of kings went to war with the Persians and conquered Egypt around uh, 600 BC, in the 6th century uh, BC, when uh, the Egyptian kingdom was falling down. And they took over these sarcophagi and brought them to Cyber. And they, these sarcophagi were specifically uh, Egyptian in the sense they were in black stone, which is not common in Lebanon or in Syria at all. It doesn't exist. They were uh, anthropoid sarcophaga, sarcophagi guy, which means they take the form of the body. They are not square or rectangles. They have clearly a head and a body and feet. They display um, a face they, that is carved in stone, and they have description of who the person is on the chest, all in ancient Egyptian uh, scripts. So what the Phoenicians did is they kind of customized those for their, for their own purposes, for their own uh, death treatment. Partly trying to show off, they are most likely try to show a power they did not really have but the possibilities and uh, the data uh, the meaning of what they did uh, helps us today know who this family was they were the fact that these sarcophagi exist today communicate with us tell us so much about um, that family and the period that this family uh, lived. And this helped others trying to make their own sarcophagi in Saida. So from there onwards, the Phoenicians started to make anthropoid sarcophagi in Saida. Uh, they are white marble from Saida. And sometimes in uh, Greek style, sometimes in uh, mutated uh, styles. Uh, which is really interesting because you can retrace the origin of where this trend came from, mainly from Egypt. I mean, it's great to be uh, to be in Istanbul and in, uh, uh, hosted by um, a local Turkish association. That's number one. It's important for artists who are not from the localities that they are working on to find partners, cultural partnerships. Let's let's call it. And we've been together in the archaeology museum. I was able to visit uh, Ottoman archives. I was able to visit uh, libraries in Beoro. And this is not over because I do need to come back. And it's important to keep those partnerships um, active. Like the, this project has been um, going on, as I said, from from 2014, and on the way more and more individuals join with their support. Imagining it's an empty, um, imagine the project is an empty building that is being inhabited by more and more people. And it's become a community that is being expanded. And I, I always like to thank all of those entities, including Day 27, which is the younger one 